Today's Bible reading for June 6th. We're reading from the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Psalms, and the Proverbs. So the Old Testament reading is from the first book of Kings, chapter 1. King David was now very old, and no matter how many blankets covered him, he could not keep warm. So his advisors told him, let us find a young virgin to wait on you and look after you, my Lord. She will lie in your arms and keep you warm. So they searched throughout the land of Israel for a beautiful girl, and they found Abishag from Shunem and brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful, and she looked after the king and took care of him but the king had no sexual relations with her. About that time, David's son, Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, began boasting, I will make myself king. So he provided himself with chariots and charioters and recruited 50 men to run in front of him. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him at any time even by asking, why are you doing that? Adonijah had been born next after Absalom, and he was very handsome. Adonijah took Joab, son of Zeruiah, and Abiathar the priest into his confidence, and they agreed to help him become king. But Zadok, the priest, Beniah, son of Jehoiada, Nathan, the prophet, Shimei, Ray, and David's personal bodyguard refused to support Adonijah. Adonijah went to the stone of Zohileth near the spring of Enrogel, where he sacrificed sheep, cattle, and fattened calves. He invited all his brothers, the other sons of King David, and all the royal officials of Judah but he did not invite Nathan the prophet or Beniah or the king's bodyguard or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and asked her, Haven't you heard that Haggith's son, Adonijah, has made himself king and our Lord David doesn't even know about it? If you want to save your own life, and the life of your son, Solomon, follow my advice. Go at once to King David and say to him, My lord the king, didn't you make a vow and say to me, Your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit on my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? And while you are still talking with him, I will come in and confirm everything you have said. So Bathsheba went into the king's bedroom. He was very old now, and Abishag was taking care of him. Bathsheba bowed down before the king. What can I do for you, he asked her. She replied, my lord, you have made a vow before the Lord your God. When you said to me, your son Solomon will surely be the next king, I will sit on my throne. But instead, Adonijah has made himself king, and my lord the king does not even know about it. He has sacrificed many cattle, fattened calves, and sheep, and he has invited all the king's son, sons to attend the celebration. He also invited Abiathar the priest and Joab, the commander of the army. But he did not invite your servant Solomon. And now, my lord, the king, all Israel is waiting for you to announce who will become king after you. If you do not act, my son Solomon and I will be treated as criminals as soon as my lord, the king, has died. While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet arrived. The king's officials told him, Nathan the prophet is here to see you. Nathan went in and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. 
Nathan asked, My lord the king, have you decided that Adonijah will be the next king and that he will sit on your throne? Today he has sacrificed many cattle, fattened calves and sheep, and has invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He also invited the commanders of the army and Abiata the priest. They are feasting and drinking with him and shouting, Long live King Adonijah. But he did not invite me or Zadok the priest or Beniah or your servant Solomon. Has my lord the king really done this without letting any of his officials know who should be the next king? King David responded, Call Bathsheba. So she came back in and stood before the king, and the king repeated his vow. As surely as the Lord lives, who, res who has rescued me from every danger, your son Solomon will be the next king and will sit on my throne this very day, just as I vowed to you before the Lord, the God of Israel. Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground before the king and exclaimed, May my Lord King David live forever. Then King David ordered, Call Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada. When they came <coughs> into the king's presence, the king said to them, Take Solomon and my officials down to Gihon Spring. Solomon is to ride on my own mule. There Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet are to anoint him king over Israel. Blow the ram's horn and shout, Long live King Solomon. Then escort him back here, and he will sit on my throne. He will succeed me as king, for I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Amen, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, replied. May the Lord, the God of my Lord the king, decree that it happen. And may the Lord be with Solomon as he has been with you, my Lord the King. And may he make Solomon's reign even greater than yours. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah son of Jehoiada, and the king's bodyguard took Solomon down to Gihon Spring with Solomon riding on King David's own mule. There Zadok the priest took the flask of olive oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon with the oil. Then they sounded the ram's horn and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon. And all the people followed Solomon into Jerusalem, playing flutes and shouting for joy. The celebration was so joyous and noisy that the earth shook with the sound. Adonijah and his guests heard the celebrating and shouting just as they were finishing their banquet. When Joab heard the sound of the ram's horn, he asked, what's going on? Why is he sitting in such an uproar? And while he was still speaking, Jonathan, son of Abiathar the priest, arrived. Come in, Adonijah just said to him, for you are a good man. You must have good news. Not at all, Jonathan replied. Our Lord King David has just declared Solomon king. The king sent him down to Gihon Spring with Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada, protected by the king's bodyguard. They, have, they had him ride on the king's old mule, and Zadok and Nathan have anointed him at Gihon Spring as the new king. They have just returned and the whole city is celebrating and rejoicing. That's what all the noise is about. What's more, Solomon is now sitting on the royal throne as king and all the royal officials have gone to King David and congratulated him saying, may your God make Solomon's fame even greater than your own and may Solomon's reign be even greater than yours. Then the king bowed his head in worship as he lay in his bed. And he said, Praise the Lord.
the God of Israel, who today has chosen his successor to sit on my throne while I am still alive to see it. Then all of Adonijah's guests jumped up in panic from the banquet table and quickly scattered. Adonijah was afraid of Solomon, so he rushed to the sacred tent and grabbed onto the horns of the altar. What soon reached Solomon that Adonijah had seized the horns of the altar in fear and that he was pleading, let King Solomon swear today that he will not kill me. Solomon replied, if he proves himself to be, a, to be loyal, not a hair on his head will be touched, but if he makes trouble, he will die. So King Solomon summoned Adonijah and they brought him down from the altar. He came and bowed respectfully before King Solomon, who dismissed him saying, go on home. So that's the reading from the Old Testament. The reading from the New Testament today, June 6th is from Acts of Apostles chapter four. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus, there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it. So the number of men who believed now totaled about 5,000. The next day, the council of all the rulers and elders and teachers of religious law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, along with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other relatives of the high priest. They brought in the two disciples and demanded, by what power or in whose name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of our people, are we being questioned today because we've done a good deed for a crippled man? Do you want to know how he was healed? Let me clearly state to all of you and to all the people of Israel, that he was healed by the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. The man you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. For Jesus is the one referred to in the scriptures, where it says, the stone that you builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. God has given no other name under heaven, by which we must be saved. The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. But since they could not see the man, sorry, but since they could see the man who had been healed standing right there among them, there was nothing the council could say. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among themselves. What should we do with these men? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign and everybody in Jerusalem knows about it. But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, we must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. The council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for this miraculous sign. 
the healing of a man who had been lame for more than 40 years. As soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. When they heard the report, all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why were the nations so angry? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. In fact, this has happened here in this very city for Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. All the believers were united in heart and mind and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. For instance, there was Joseph, the one the apostles nicknamed Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and came from the island of Cyprus. He sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. So that's the reading from the New Testament. The reading from the Psalms, Psalm 124. A song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. A Psalm of David. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat, what if the Lord had not been on our side? When people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord, who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So that was the Psalms and now the Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 24. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. May the Lord God Almighty bless the reading and hearing of his word in Jesus Christ's name. 